York Jersey now. Okay. <laughs> yes. All right, we're gonna get started. And while we wait for some people coming in and we are live on Facebook, and good evening, everyone. Thank you for being here. You could have been somewhere else doing something else, but you decided to be here tonight. So for that, I'm very, very grateful. My name is Majet, and I'm the owner of Diva Girl. I'm a trauma therapist, and I help people find fulfillment through counseling, community, and consulting. As you are coming in, please take a moment um, to type in the chat box or in the comment box where you are in the world. And if you have an Instagram handle that you want to share, feel free to do that as well. Um, we will be wait for about one more minute and we will get started. But as we wait, I want to introduce everyone to Diva Girl, those who are not familiar with Diva Girl, and, and let you know what you are all about. And Diva Girl is a lifestyle community of diverse, ambitious, and goal-oriented and community-driven women. We are a group of women who educate and empower other women with unique and fun workshops, conferences, parties, and volunteer trips abroad. So we've been to Belize, Nepal, Ghana, Peru, and India. Um, we believe in inclusivity, kindness, equality, and having fun to gain the confidence in life and in business. And if you are not part of our Diva Girl 411 Facebook group yet, please feel free to join free. And uh, tonight, very fun, because the topic tonight is very fun. Um, I don't care what <laughs> other people say. <laughs> but tonight we are hosting our Diva Girl VCon online. It's our webinar portion. And some of you may have missed the conference or missed this particular seminar in person back in May because you're somewhere else in another presentation or in another room. But this is your chance to hear from one of our VCon presenters and spend about 30 minutes with them to learn more about this specific topic. So here's the topic. The topic tonight is top strategies for navigating perimenopause, right? Fun. Our perspective <laughs> tonight will demystify perimenopause and show you how to embrace this transformative phase of life, right? We heard so many things about menopause. So here's an expert, Jill. Jill is the CEO and founder of With Your Nature Wellness and Weight Loss. She and her team help women over 40 achieve their highest level of health in a sustainable, healthy, and joyous way. She has a Master of Science degree in human nutrition and is a board-certified nutrition specialist and a certified Big Leap coach. And she is on a mission to guide women to achieve their wildest dreams for their health while loving the food they eat and the life they live. So everyone, let's <laughs> give Jill a smile. <laughs> that was like the best introduction I've ever received. I love it. Because you're like kind of dancing while you're doing it. <laughs> well, thank you. Thank you, Majette. I, I love everything that you do and your energy. It's just, it's it's really contagious in a wonderful way. And um, you just uplift everybody who you come in contact with, at least as far as I have experienced and witnessed. So, and I love your community. So thank you for having me. Thank you everybody for being here, Facebook Live, whoever's watching the recording. Thank you. So I am going to share some slides and we're going to talk about perimenopause, menopause. Now, yes, it. Uh, I wouldn't say it's a fun topic, <laughs> but um, it's an important topic and it should be more fun than, than we give it credit for. So um, I'm gonna go right into some slides. Oh, hold on a second, change this here. Um, and so this is what we're talking about, sailing through perimenopause and beyond. Uh, menopause is, it's a word that we kind of throw around, but, you know, a lot of women who even have gone through menopause don't even really understand what menopause is uh, in, in the type of detail that I think is important for all of us to understand. So there's all these different aspects of it, you know, hormones, symptoms. Um, and so we're going to dig into what I think, you know, I sat down and I thought like 
what's the most important thing for women to know? Like there's a lot, there's so much information to know about this time of period, but like, what's like the really, really important stuff. So that's what we're going to talk about. And the first thing I would like you to understand is that I'm going to put on the, um, you know, the slides here. These are all different phases of what we think of as menopause. So it starts with early perimenopause, mid, late perimenopause, and then what I call perimenopause last stand. <laughs> That's like that last year, year and a half, two years where your period is like over. And then you don't have a period for six months and then all of a sudden you have a period, right? So that, that can be like an interesting time for people. Then we have, then you're into menopause early, post-menopause, and then 10 years post. So there's, at all of these different stages, different things are going on. So when we say menopause, it's not just like this thing that happens when you're 52 or you're 48. This is, this could be 40 or 50 years of your life. So we really, really should understand it a lot more than I think, you know, most of us are educated about it or, or it's talked about. So I want you to think about right now, where do you think you are? And also if you could put it in the chat, if you're you know, on the live call, because I just wanna see who's on this call so that we can get very relevant for you. So early perimenopause usually will start. Now there are people who go through medical menopause. You know, there are medical reasons, whether they have some kind of you know, oftentimes like a cancer chemotherapy type treatment, or um, they ha have a hysterectomy or, you know, some, some form of that. So we're really just talking about people who haven't experienced that. And we're just going through the normal sort of cycle. Early perimenopause could start in your late thirties. And a lot of women don't realize that your hormones are already starting to shift at that age. Mid perimenopause, mid forties, late perimenopause, late forties. This is generally speaking, right? Perimenopause last stand, it could be 48, it could be 52, it could be 55. It depends on the person. Uh, then you have that early phase of, pest, of menopause, post-menopause. And then once you've had, your period has been gone for 10 years or more, it's a, things are a little bit different. So the woman who you know, the 54 year old woman who's been in menopause for two years is in a different kind of state hormonally than when, you know, 12 years later when she's 67 years old, right? Or 65, whatever. So we really don't want to just take this as one big thing. Oh, menopause. It's no, it's like, how old are you? What's going on with your body? What's going on with your life? It's all really important for you to understand. Now I have to go escape here for me to see that. Pull up the chat. Sorry. So we have, um, I just want to see. So postmenopause, mid, so mid peri, um, early to mid, and early peri. Okay. So we have definitely perimenopause people. And, and one person who's saying um, you're postmenopause. Okay. So that helps me to kind of just guide this conversation a little bit more relevantly to you. Sorry, let's go to the next slide. Okay, so these are the three main like areas of conversation that I want to have tonight. First, my biggest piece of advice is start early and don't delay. That's actually two pieces of advice. <laughs> start early and don't delay. We'll talk about this, what that means. Treat according to symptoms, but also do lab work. And finally, we're going to talk about the order in which you would want to make changes. This is really, really important. And it's actually an important aspect of all, anything you're doing when approaching better health. So we're gonna start off with start early and don't delay. And I'm gonna go, um, I'm just gonna briefly say that if you have symptoms that you think are due to perimenopause or menopause, please address them. Address them as early and as quickly as you possibly can. Don't delay. And I'm not saying this to make anybody feel bad. I'm saying this, this is a theme that I'm probably, you're gonna hear me mention a few times, is women's healthcare is woefully neglectful of women. 
And many of you may have even heard that a lot of medications haven't been tested on women, even though they're regularly prescribed for women. So especially when we're talking about per perimenopause into menopause, it's like completely neglected. And what happens is, and maybe some of you on this call have experienced this, people go to the doctor and they go, doc, I'm 48. I'm gaining weight. My belly, you know, my belly's getting bigger and I have hot flashes and I can't sleep at night and uh, my mood is all over the place. And what the heck is going on? Can you help me? Oh, you're just going through perimenopause or menopause. What? No, no, do not let that be a thing. Okay. So that's what I mean by start early and, and be proactive. So please, uh, first of all, if you have something going on, you can put it in the chat. I mean, some of it might be private and you don't want to do that, but if you feel like you want to, then please do. If you have symptoms, if you have something going on and that way we can talk about it. We're such a small group. We can, we can problem solve right here. So especially um, I see Marissa, Marissa, Maurice, 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 probably, right? Uh, just started early Perry. So this may be 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, around that age. And you're starting to have a little bit of symptoms. And it's like, eh, I'm just going through perimenopause. No, you can actually do something about it now. You don't have to wait till you're 49 and you're in, you know, the symptoms have gotten worse over the past six, six, seven, eight, ten 10 years. So uh, anybody have any comments or questions about that? Um, <laughs> I hope I'm pronouncing your name correctly, Maurice. Uh, that's exactly how my conversation with my doctor went. Exactly. So they, unfortunately, hi, thanks for coming on. Yeah, like, I don't know what the deal is, but they brush us off and that is wrong and we should not accept that. So thank you for sharing that. Um, if anybody has any comments about that, just put it in the chat or just, you know, come up on screen if you want. Insomnia, abdominal bloating, and pain, serious hot flashes. Okay. So, and Sonia, you said post, right? Okay. So um, that thank you for thank you for posting the the specific symptoms. So one of the when when in early perimenopause, actually, what's happening is our progesterone. So the big sex hormones that we want to talk about estrogen, progesterone, and testosterone, they're produced in our ovaries. But as we go into this perimenopause phase, our ovaries are kind of like, pretty soon, you know, we're, we're going to be closed down, right? So there's not as much activity of the ovaries. So, um, but the first hormone that's going to go for most women is progesterone. And what happens is progesterone is very important for sleep. So Sonia, Sleep insomnia could be related to low progesterone. I mean, this continues on, you know, but that's one of the most common things that women in their early forties will say, well, all of a sudden I'm not sleeping well, I gained weight and maybe the mood. So progesterone affects your body fat. It affects your sleep. It affects your, um, uh, your mood and, um, it can affect your, um, well, progesterone and estrogen, think of them as sisters. Okay, so estrogen is like the naughty, out of control sister who just wants to have a good time and party all night. And progesterone kind of pulls estrogen back and keeps her in check. Okay, so if you think about that analogy, I think it's helpful because what's happening in early perimenopause is progesterone, the one who's trying to control estrogen is going down, down, down. So estrogen is like, we're having a party here. So you could potentially even have low levels of estrogen and still have symptoms of high estrogen, which is called estrogen dominance. So the biggest fix you can do in early perimenopause through, throughout our forties for most women is to boost progesterone production. I, that could potentially solve all your problems. It's amazing. So, um, so that's what, when you said insomnia, it made me think of that, um, bloating, hot flashes, that's especially later on post-menopause, you'll see that. Um, and that's really just oftentimes both are knocked out, progesterone and estrogen. 
Okay, so we don't want to let these symptoms hang around. There is help. There is help. I promise you there is help. So that's my big lecture <laughs> on start early, don't delay, okay? Um, my next, I'm going to go back into slides here. And we're going to go to the next one, which is treat according to symptoms, but also lab work. So unfortunately, oftentimes what will happen is, you know, let's say a woman is having symptoms. She goes into the doctor, doc, I'm not sleeping well, and uh, I'm super moody. I'm having a lot of anxiety, can't cope with stress anymore. Oh, well, here's an antidepressant for you. I'm sure, Majet, you can appreciate this, right? But, Doc, maybe I just don't have enough progesterone. Why are you prescribing a, 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 you know, an antidepressant in this case, right? So what would you do? What would a smart, good doctor do? They would do lab work. They would look at your symptoms and they would do lab work. So also, what also happens, which is very unfortunate, is someone comes in and they go, oh, I'm having all these problems. The doc does some lab work, but the lab work looks normal. And so they say, sorry, ma'am, I guess you're just getting old. Don't set, again, it's the same theme as the last one. Don't settle for that. If a doctor tells you that you're just getting old or it's just menopause, time to find a new doctor, like a hundred percent, because there are a lot of amazing doctors and nurse practitioners and RN and, you know, lots of people out there who will be sympathetic and will really help you solve this problem. So I'm just going to go on. These are key hormones. And literally I could talk for two hours about each one of these, but we're not going to do that. <laughs> There's a list. Take a screenshot, take a picture. Um, we could talk about, if you're curious about any of these, we can talk about them, but I'm just cognizant of the time. So I don't want to go into too much detail. I already talked about estrogen, progesterone being sisters. Um, testosterone is one of my favorite hormones because uh, something we haven't mentioned is libido. So if vaginal dryness is a thing that will often happen post-menopause, and that's because low estrogen, but low testosterone could happen in your 40s and you might still have plenty of estrogen and progesterone, but if your testosterone is low, you're not going to have that sex drive. And that's not fun for most of us, right? We still want to have sex when we're 45 or 55 or 85. Why not? Testosterone is your friend. Um, cortisol is very important because, um, remember how I said that our ovaries produce most of these sex hormones when we're still ovulating. So in your thirties and even in your forties, but as we get older and less and less eggs are in the ovaries, what happens is we have less production of these hormones in the ovaries. Does that make sense? So what happens in perimenopause and postmenopause? Where do we get estrogen? Does anybody know? You can just call it out. Somebody might know. Once, you've, once you're done with your period, there's no more estrogen coming out of your ovaries. Well, I mean, there might be a little bit, but probably almost nothing. Where do we get it from? We get it from our adrenals. But our adrenals have a really important job, which is to produce cortisol and DHEA hormones. What is the stress hormone? Cortisol, right? So if you're 48, 49, 55, and your um, ovaries are not producing your sex hormones anymore, and you are stressed out like crazy, your adrenals are busy making cortisol, maybe hopefully spitting out a little bit of DHEA, and not much else. So now you're compromised, your estrogen is low, your progesterone is low, your testosterone is low, your DHEA is low, and all you got is cortisol, which is the stress hormone, which will save your life. I mean, it's important, but it's not going to make you feel sexy. It's not going to make you feel, you know, go to sleep at night. It's that, you know, like you need those sex hormones for all of these feel good things. So that's why stress, you know how people always talk about how like stress compromises, you know, during perimenopause. This is why right here. 
Um, insulin and leptin, I won't spend too much time about just insulin. You, one thing you need to know is that as we age, we become less insulin sensitive. So when you're young, you know, you're 18 and you can eat a, you know, a, a big Briars container of ice cream and the next day your belly's still flat. What's that all about? Well, that's insulin sensitivity for the most part. So as you get older, that gets less and less good, which is why oftentimes people will start to gain weight, especially belly fat as they get older. So we want to be insulin sensitive and that just naturally as we age, it changes, unfortunately. So go to your doctor and say, can you test all of these things? Leptin, I would only ask for if you have appetite issues, like you're hungry all the time, and or if you have overweight or you have obesity, which means a BMI of you know, 27, 28 or higher. Otherwise, I wouldn't ask for leptin, but all these other things your doctor should be testing and it's gonna help him or her to understand the complex of symptoms that you might be having. So I wanna move on to making changes in the right order. So we want to be efficient and effective. When we're making changes in the, in the endeavor to have better hormonal balance, we wanna be efficient and effective. So the, the, the way to do that is to do things in the correct order. So if you walk in, let's say, um, I think it was Sonia, goes to the doctor and says, doc, I have insomnia, I have bloating, and I have hot flashes, I'm suffering. And the doctor says, here is some oral estrogen, take this and it's gonna solve all your problems. The problem is that potentially Sonia feels worse. She actually feels worse on the estrogen. Has anybody ever, you could just put up like one of those little zoom hands to show me. Has anybody ever heard of anybody taking hormones and feeling worse, like menopausal? No. Okay. Well, it, it happens well, all the time. I just got on it in July. Uh -huh. I feel like the fatigue during the day is worse, but I'm sleeping better at night. <laughs> so I'm not okay. the one like I used to. And then I get up for work at 445. So that's about how much sleep I was getting every night. Plus right. I was going through a divorce. So I had stress there too. So yeah. I was put on um, Lexapro about two years ago for the stress and anxiety. Um, so, I mean, I'm not crying every day. Right. But I still, I still feel like I have anxiety. Sometimes, you know, I can feel like, it feels like my heart's racing, you know, for no reason. But I have so many different challenges going on all at the same time. I'm trying to take care of my mother who's 93 years old, who's stressful, um, plus work a full-time job. I'm worried about my sister because her health is declining. Um, and then I just got finished my divorce last year, which was just a complete nightmare. You know, mm -hmm. he wanted to fight me over everything, but didn't want me. So, right. ha, uh, Sonia, how long have you been past you postmenopausal? Like when did your uh, last I got period? seven years ago and I haven't okay. had a period since then. Um, so when they tested me, I was definitely in menopause and I'm okay. 57 right now. Okay. All right. Yeah. All right. Yeah. And, and, you know, one thing that's, did they just give you estrogen or did they give you estrogen they and progesterone? Until I complained because my bloating in my abdominal area is so bad. I went from mm -hmm. my annual checkup last week and my BMI was 35. Right. I've never been this heavy. And the extra weight is hard on my knees. Right. So yeah. it, it's like a downward roll. <laughs> okay. Yeah. That's a lot. That's a, a lot going on. So I'm going to kind of, I'm going to continue on, but I'm going to sprinkle mm -hmm. in some things here about what you said. Thank you for sharing, Sonia. Mm -hmm. um, you know, what, what you're sharing is not, 
you know, it happens often enough to women, especially in our 50s. We, you know, stress just becomes almost overwhelming. So, um, yeah, it's just, it's a lot going on. So one thing that you touched upon that I want to talk about is, so let me back up for a second. I want you to think of your hormones, you know, those hormones that I listed, and there are many more. Those are just like the top ones, right? I want you to think of each of those hormones as like a section in an orchestra, okay? So if you have this amazing orchestra, so the violin is your estrogen, the cellos are your progesterone, whatever, doesn't matter. And you have this incredible orchestra, this is the analogy, and they, it made beautiful music together, right? But then you take this entire orchestra and you transplant them to uh, Turkey, where I was this summer, <laughs> out in the sun, it's 105 degrees, there's no shade, it's hot, and they still have to play. What happens to that orchestra? It's a terrible environment to be playing in an orchestra, right? The quality of their performance is going to go down, 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 down. Why? The environment sucks. <laughs> if you've ever watched an orchestra, they're usually in a dark room with nice temperature controlled and they're great, right? Um, so that's how I want you to think of hormones, like an orchestra. Now, when your lifestyle is got all these problems, right? Maybe you went through a divorce, maybe you're have, you know, you're stressed out because you're caring for an elderly parent. You got all this stuff going on. That's your environment. That's the environment of the hormones and your orchestra cannot function properly, just as if a, a good orchestra were out in the hot sun. That's what you're asking your hormones to do, to perform in you know, the brutal heat or whatever it is. That's just an analogy. How can you expect your hormones to perform properly if they're in the wrong, if the environment is so, um, you know, detrimental? So that's why when I say about hormone, the order, we wanna look at the lifestyle first. We wanna look at the diet actually second, then we can consider supplements and then medications. Now, this isn't a hundred percent. Somebody might be um, just so, you know, having such a hard time that sometimes a good supplement can come in and make you feel better really fast. But generally speaking, if you, if, a, if, if someone goes into a doctor and has, you know, a lot of the symptoms that Sonia is experiencing and she's got a lot going on with her lifestyle, I don't know about your diet, but you know, with all that stress, probably not fantastic because it's really hard to eat well when you have all the stress in your life, right? And then someone gives you a medication. That's like saying, okay, Sonia, you know, your orchestra is performing in this horrible heat. So what we're going to do is we're going to replace the violins with new ones. But we're still going to ask the orchestra to play in this horrible heat. The orchestra still cannot perform. So medications work their best when they're in an environment that is conducive to good performance. So you have to make the environment better before you add in stuff. Again, there are always exceptions to this, but generally speaking, if someone, the, it's just unfortunate. It happens a lot of times. The, the woman comes in, doctor finally gives in. All right, I'll give you some hormones. She feels worse because the lifestyle and the diet has not been addressed. So I'm, I'm sorry to be the one to tell you, but you have to work on that environment. And it's not easy to do that, right? Stress is like, it's tough. So, but that, that's kind of the order of how things have to work. So um, this is my big quote. <laughs> the performance of exogenous hormones, that's you know, a cream, a pill, something that you take in, right? Not your body's producing is dependent upon the milieu, which is the environment. So the de performance of a medication, and that's true for any medication, vaccines, antibiotics, whatever it is, your body is gotta be in a good space to receive that medication. 
So lifestyle. And again, I'm going to go through these quickly because I don't even know how much more time I have. But um, so sleep, stress management, movement, mindset, passion, purpose, social life. So if you are having a lot of menopausal symptoms, whether you're 38 or 58 or 78, doesn't really matter. This is the stuff you got to pay attention to. Do you have a group of supportive people around you? Do you have something that you're excited about in your life? Is your mindset negative all the time? Are you always complaining and always playing the victim? I'm, I'm not saying any of this with judgment because believe me, I've, you know, we all have our things that we have to work on. But these are the things that, that will affect your hormones, the affect that environment. Movement, very important. Stress management and sleep are by far the top of the list, by far. And some of you might be thinking, well, I wish, I think, Sonia, you said you have insomnia, right? Like, I wish I could sleep better. If I could sleep better, then everything would be better. That's oftentimes, nine times out of 10, goes back to stress management. Because if you were super stressed, then it affects your sleep. Okay, so that's lifestyle stuff. This is diet stuff that I'm gonna, and I'll, I'm gonna breeze through this more quickly so we can talk more, just so we have time. So diet, when it comes to diet, one of the best things that if you could remember and, and walk away with is the concept of nourish first. We do this with all of our clients. Instead of, oh, I eat Oreos, I eat ice cream, I eat potato chips, I eat a croissant for breakfast, I don't care. Don't worry about that right now. What I want you to do is add nutritious food that you like before you do anything else, before you try to take away the bad stuff, add the good stuff. This is counter to what most diets tell you to do. So eat more whole foods, get your macronutrients, get enough protein at your breakfast, your lunch, your dinner, get some healthy fats, get some fiber. It, you'd be amazed how much less you want to you know, eat those junk foods because now your brain has fuel, your cells are getting the fatty acids that it needs, you know, and your microbiome is getting the fiber. Of course, they do more in the body than that, but those are just some examples. At every meal, eat the nutritious foods first. If you have to have macaroni and cheese, fine, but I want you to eat a piece of fish and, you know, a broccoli first. And then you can have your pasta, but guess what? You're not gonna be as hungry because you just got some protein and fiber and some good fat. And now you're less, your, your brain is less craving those empty carbs. And then you can add superfoods. So vegetable juice, liver, you know, organ meats, you can add bone broth, you can add fermented foods, add, add, add. And then once you're really good at eating more healthy food, then you can say, well, maybe I'll eat less ice cream this week because we have to be gentle on ourselves, especially because we have stress. So we're all stressed out and, oh, my belly is fat and you know, I, I have acne and my hair is falling out and my skin is dry and I don't, I'm not even wanna see my husband. He has no appeal to me. So what am I gonna do? I'm gonna go on a diet and I'm gonna starve myself and I'm gonna suffer. No, that's, that's the male dominated model, which is very aggressive and it's actually kind of violent and abusive. Let's be kind to ourselves. Oh, what can I add that, that I like? You don't have to eat anything. Just choose the stuff that you like. Now, if you hate all vegetables, you know, we have to work on that a little bit, but um, so that's the diet stuff. Um, this is a document. I, I forgot to put fish in here for some reason, like years ago, I just noticed today, but um, I'll give you a link where you can get this, this document, which lists the different sources of protein, fat, and fiber. So whole foods, protein, fat, and fiber. So instead of eating a piece of bread, can you have some quinoa? Can you have some um, wild rice? Can you have some beans? And Instead of eating, you know, a thing of Dan and yogurt, can you have an egg? Instead of eating a protein bar, can you have a bag, you know, some nuts or, um, you know, have some kind of snack that's like, you know, a chicken leg or something. 
<laughs> I, I think chicken legs are great. All right. So how much more time do I have, Majette? Because I, I thought I had an hour. <laughs> Where are we at? 740. You're good. You have at least about eight minutes, seven, eight, seven, eight minutes. So yeah. You're okay. Good. All right. So um, again, you can take a screenshot of this if you get full screen of this. Um, these are some supplements. Now, I do not recommend that you just start taking a bunch of supplements. Again, you got to work on the lifestyle and the diet first, right? But even, you know, if you're on the pro in the process of working on things, you might want to add a supplement. Number one, a good multi. I believe everybody should be on a good multi. We just, I, I, our clients enter what they're eating into a food diary app and I see what they're eating. I've entered my food into the food diary app and I've never got all of my USDA minimum requirements. It's, it's almost impossible. So everybody needs a good multi. On top of that, Chase Tree, if you are in, Maurice, if you're in early perimenopause, this chase tree can be like, oh, like it can just like solve all the problems. It's amazing. Um, again, you know, consult with your healthcare provider before you start taking a supplement, but this is a pretty benign one. I've been taking 800 milligrams of chase tree since I was 42. I'm 53 now. I still take it. I was having breast pain and short cycles. Gone. Then when I got a little bit older, like 46, 47, I started having the breast pain again and short cycles again. I was like, ah, oh, what happened? I started taking the Sulfora Clear, which is um, a natural, um, that's a specific product, but you can find other, you know, similar things. You ever hear like broccoli is good for you when, you know, for like estrogen. So the, the constituents within cruciferous vegetables help our body break down hormones properly. So with Sephora Clear and Chase Tree, I made it to 52 and at almost 53 without any symptoms, right? Then I, then I started getting hot flashes <laughs> this summer. Black cohosh, that's the one at the bottom. Black cohosh is a phytoestrogen. That means it's a plant estrogen. It's soft. It's gentle. It's not going to cause cancer or anything like that. So that can help you with hot flashes. If your postmenopause doesn't help as much, but you, you know, it can. Uh, B vitamins are great for breaking down hormones. And then we have adaptogens, which are natural plant constituents that help your body manage stress. This is just a sampling of some hormones that can really, really be like highly impactful. Um, medications, I just wanna say, I, I always recommend bioidentical hormones. BHRT is bioidentical hormone replacement therapy. Uh, they're more gentle. They're less dangerous in terms of like risk for cancer and stuff like that. So you want to go to a doctor who knows about bioidentical hormones if you're going to take hormones, whether peri or postmenopause. Um, like I mentioned, some doctors will give you an antidepressant before they see if your thyroid is functioning properly because thyroid can really affect your mood. Um, and insulin, there are medication options for if you're, you know, to improve insulin sensitivity. One of them is met, metformin. Again, these are medications you got to talk to your doctor, but I just wanted to throw some of those out there. So think about what's one thing you can start doing today. Where do you need to start? Lifestyle, diet. Maybe you're, maybe that's, you're pretty good with that stuff. And you're like, I just need some progesterone. Maybe you need to start some chase tree. Um, again, you know, you want to consult with your doctor. Um, we are doing a 10 day detox plus reset program. It's actually a month altogether. It's starting next week. I just threw this in here. If you want to do it, it's starting next week. So, and we have to order the kit. So if you are interested in this, just email me so that I can get you the kit in time for when we start. It's a pretty cool thing because we'll do the 10 day detox and then we phase back into normal eating because it takes time. This is our program. We have different sail through perimenopause programs. And if you want to con um, contact me, you can email me with questions because I know I just covered a lot. I'm going to go out of screen share and we have probably, I don't know, three or four minutes left. Um, 
there are there's stuff in the chat. Um, this is an amazing list. Okay, good. Um, Maurice, you're waiting for the results, but knowing this will help me go forward. Um, yes. Thyroid can affect your mood. Low progesterone can affect your mood. Like it can make you anxious or depressed. How fun is that? Um, and uh, testosterone is really important for your mood too, because it, it, it can give you that like get up and go in the morning. You know, if, you, if your testosterone is low, you may have low motivation. And motivation is important if you have to get up and exercise and eat well and stuff. So these hormones are like, they're powerful. They're controlling our neurotransmitters, our digestion. I mean, they're doing a lot in the body and we can't just ignore them. We have to be proactive. Okay, any quick questions before we get yeah. cut off from the... <laughs> so we're good, you're good. We have about like 10 minutes. Um, like if oh, okay, cool. Yeah, yeah, awesome. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, um, so question from, um, from Facebook. Um, um, is there anything you can do with hot flashes? Uh, am I going to be, am I going to feel normal again? So <laughs> please. Okay. So hot flashes are no joke. I had never had a hot flash until June of this year. And I was like, oh my God, I'm having hot flashes. Like, I can't believe I'm having hot flashes. So um, black cohosh, the one that I had on the list there is, is, is a very gentle, it's especially, it depends on where you are in your journey. Like if you're early perimenopause, I mean, if you're early menopause, like you still haven't gone, menopause is one day. It's the, it's the last, it's the first day of your last period. And then you go for an entire year without a period. That one day is menopause. So you could go, like I, I had my period in May and then in June, I started having hot flashes. I was like, all right, this is it. I got my period in, in the end of August. I was like, okay, <laughs> you know. So um, now I'm, I have that whole clock starts again for another year. So um, what happens is when you, especially at the end, like what phase I'm in right now, your estrogen production is really tanking and your estrogen controls your body temperature not just your estrogen, but it's a major player. So when your estrogen tanks, your body is like, well, we're hot, we're cold, we're hot, we're cold. We don't know what we are. And then therefore you have hot flashes and you may have chills as well. You may feel cold. That person on Facebook may be experiencing that. So, but if you take black cohosh, it's gonna be a gentle estrogen that just kind of boosts you. It may take, hormones take two to three months to really kind of for you to really see if it's helping. Like if you start taking chase tree, give it three months. And chase tree is a very inexpensive supplement. So you could go and get it and just start, you know, take it spread out throughout the day so that it's not, your body can kind of like, it's got like a, you know, slowly gets into your bloodstream. So yes, blood clohosh, if you are more than a year past, you know, your last period, you can get estrogen but don't ever take oral estrogen, ever. If a doctor prescribes to you oral estrogen, run away, bad. You want cream, really cream is the best because you can control exactly how much you're putting on. You know, it can be subtle. Um, and really you wanna take it with progesterone as well. So if you're postmenopausal, you're having a lot of hot flashes, estrogen, progesterone, and yes, your life can go back to normal and you can feel absolutely fabulous. And if you throw in a little testosterone, it's good for your muscle tone, good for your sex drive, good for your mood. Do not get an, a test, testosterone shot. We had a client this year who got a testosterone shot. She said that her husband was running away from her because she was so horny. All she wanted to do was have sex with him he was like I can't take it like can you believe that like what man right but um she, it was terrible and then it slowly waned down so get a cream if it's too much you could just take a little less so yeah is the detox a tea well the detox is a a 
true high quality supplement program that I have done many times with clients and myself. And it's not, it's a very high quality, it's like powder and um, but it's, it's, it's a great, you know, it's, it's a little intense, but it's a really good one. Um, was there another question here? How can I maintain or lose the weight? <laughs> okay. So estrogen, progesterone, and testosterone all affect your weight. So does, so does insulin, right? Cortisol, so does thyroid. So when somebody has a hard time losing weight or they're gaining weight and they don't know why it's hard as a practitioner. I'm like, well, is it estrogen? Is it, you know, what is it? So you have to go, you know, get some good lab work done, rule out thyroid first because, um, low thyroid function is gonna, you know, usually affect your weight. What happens with a lot of women and it happened to me all of a sudden in July, I looked down and I said, oh my gosh, I'm getting a belly estrogen. If you see it on your belly, all of a sudden, really weight is about, you know, diet, <laughs> most of it, 90% diet. Um, breast pain too, Majet, you were asking about that, mostly pro progesterone. I, I had the same thing. I was like, oh my gosh, do I have breast cancer? And it, it hurts so much. Like if someone would give me a hug, I'd be like, and gone. You can get the supplements. Um, some of them you could buy in a store. You could probably go to a health food store and buy Chase Tree and it would be, it'd probably be fine. It's a very inexpensive supplement. Um, but you know, the professional grade, the high quality stuff, you kind of have to go through a practitioner. Metagenics, the Sulfora Clear, you could go onto Amazon probably and buy it. Just make sure you're buying it from Metagenics, not a third party. Um, but really you're, you're not supposed to, you know, you're supposed to go through a practitioner for, for a lot of this stuff. And also Sonia Jones, digestive enzymes. Digestive enzymes may help you with that bloating a lot. I, I have a product that I love. I'll put so it in the chat. What is that and where do I get it? So I'm not sure if you can buy this at a health food store. My local health food store has it. But um, if you can't get this brand and try to find something similar, just look it up. I think it's called Digestive uh, Pure Encapsulations uh, Digestion Ultra. I forget the exact name. I can email it to you, to ultra something. Um, but in general, again, digestive enzymes are not that expensive and they body break down the proteins and the fats and stuff um, with a little HCL, uh, which is hydrochloric acid, which is stomach acid essentially. Uh, especially if you're older, a lot of times our stomach acid starts to decrease. So if you take a little bit with a supplement and every time you eat a meal, you take the enzymes, it, it could be in one pill. You take it and it's like magic. It might not, might not fix your problems, but I would definitely try it. Um, if anybody really, you know, if you really want to get supplements, I have a dispensary online. You can reach out to me, but I'd have to ask you some questions and stuff, you know. Um, and also we have, if you are interested in talking to me, get on a call with me. Like I have, um, I didn't even put any of those links in there. I was going to, uh, yeah, um, I, you can I, book a call with me, yeah. you know. Yeah, so I put I put your um your website on the chat box and on um, Facebook as well. Um, but when whoever is here and whoever registered, you will get an email from me for more ways, different ways of um being in contact with Jill. Um, and yeah, and there you go. And I'll copy that link too if you would like to get a one on one with Jill. Um, feel free to do that. Um, any other questions? Yeah, that's that's like a free, you know, like discovery call. It's not um like a consult, you know what I mean? It's just to kind of talk and see if, you know, what's going on here, what you're, what's going on with you. Yeah, any other questions? 
Yeah, there's a lot of information, really great information. And it's such a great reminder for us that we don't need to suffer, right? Like I've heard it so much growing up, like, oh, menopause is horrible, but you can't do anything about it, right? Despite what people say, you know, that you just write it out and there's nothing you can do, but there's something we can do. And tonight, absolutely proving all of that wrong, Jill. So I appreciate that. I know it's funny because I, I have a nurse practitioner who I collect, we work together, like we share clients, but she also, also is my, you know, gynecologist person. And in July, I, I messaged her and was like, I'm having hot flashes. I need estrogen now. And she was like, try the black cohosh. <laughs> so it. yeah, I, I, you know, be, don't delay, get don't on delay. it because there are great people who can help you out there for sure. Yeah. And even just, just that information about like when it starts, right? We always think uh-huh. that you like in middle age, right? Mm-hmm. In like the 50s. But then, you know, like I started feeling all this stuff in my like 30s, yeah. right? So, so it's this is super amazing. And, you know, like, at the conference, before the conference, I've been watching you and reading your stuff, getting your um, newsletter. And I'm like, you know, like I'm learning a lot from you. And during the conference, you shared a lot too. And then here you are again, I cannot thank you enough for showing up for mm-hmm. us, for our community and sharing all this knowledge and wisdom and tips to help us navigate this, you know, this part of being a fabulous woman, right? It doesn't yeah. have to be horrible. Yeah. There's a lot of great stuff you can do, yeah. for sure. Yeah. Um, any mm-hmm. thoughts, mm-hmm. questions before I let everybody go? You can just. Uh, Maurice, you said you were too young. Yeah. It it ha- it often will start in late thirties. You know, and if no, if you don't know that, you kind of think you're crazy, right? Mm-hmm. Yes. Uh, and, um, and yeah, my doctor did tell me that too. Like, you're too young to be going through that. And I was like 43. And I'm like, mm-hmm. I don't know about that. Um, but Tabitha, I will send everybody a replay um, via email. Maurice, were you going to say something? I was going to say that my doctor said, oh, no, you're the right age. I'm like, no, I'm not. I'm the one that told her I was too young. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, it's not right. It's not <laughs> it's not time it's not time but my family actually start like menopause late like on my mom's side so apparently it's right time <laughs> yeah and it, it's better to be proactive it's like any health problem you know like uh better to address it early and just you know be proactive instead of waiting till it gets worse and worse yeah 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 and that's that's another thing that women need to also practice. Prioritize yourself, and you know, and yeah. take care of yourself. If you feel something that's not right, advocate for yourself. We advocate for other people a lot. Um, and yeah. this is a good reminder for us to take care of ourselves. So, yes. um, all right. Well, I don't want to keep you guys. This is amazing. Thank you so much, Jill. Thank you so much for yeah. everybody who joined us in the Zoom. Who who was watching us on Facebook? Thank you so much. Um, any last words, Jill, before we say adios? I think I'll just reiterate what you said, Maja. And I, I just from the first time I ever spoke to you, I felt like you and I were like on the same wavelength. So much is like, let's love and care for ourselves, you know, and really prioritize ourselves so that we can be better for all the other people around us. I I really think that's important. Don't neglect yourself. Give yourself the love and the care that you deserve. We all deserve to be healthy and happy. Yes, yes. And with With that words, with those words of wisdom, we say goodbye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Thank you, Sonia. Stay in touch. Thank you, Tabitha.